News 4's Dave Stanley is working this story from downtown Miami. Dave? Well, Cambrell and Ann, I'm standing right in front of the police vehicle processing building inside the car that could have been used in the acid attacks. Now, nobody is saying anything, but this is what we've been able to find out. The area you see behind me right now, this is pretty much the worst of it. In fact, you can probably see the helicopter up there from the uh, Division of Forestry dumping uh, hundreds of gallons of water. Cambrell, that headache is about to turn into a migraine because this problem is not going to go away anytime soon. It wasn't too long ago that the Miami Beach Marine Patrol held a free boating safety course. So how many people do you think showed up? Nobody. The victim received the package and opened up the bomb over here. When it went off, it put a hole in the floor over here and blew her back over into this area. Two men go beat somebody down, go beat a, a guy up, jump out of the car, just clock him, clock him in with, with, a, with a bat or something. Beat that man down. <laughs> I got out of jail with a fake name. <sighs> right there, man, I want to go hit a house. I got caught, man. Armed burglar occupied, man. I got caught right there. I feel, I feel like such a rookie, man. I was like, damn. His name is Orlando Schmiel, and at the ripe old age of 15, he just turned 15, you could call him a lot of things, but a rookie wouldn't be one of them. He's brash, he's brazen, a convicted burglar, car thief. He's all of these things, but, say police, an exaggerator isn't one of them. Detective Carlos Yopes with the Hialeah Police Department. When Orlando tells you he can steal a car in 10 seconds, he's not lying to you. <laughs> Depends what kind of car it is. If it's a Honda, a regular Honda, it takes a couple, it takes a, it takes a while, because you got to like, like make a little horn, though. It's like a little thing like this where the, where the handle goes. It's like a little black little plastic around, and you got to stick a little black plastic right here in the middle. Where like the, the little the little knob is, the little thing, because there's four doors. Two door Hondas, you gotta break the window. So a Honda's good because that, that's gonna take you a couple of minutes. No, not even a couple of minutes, no. I ain't saying a couple of minutes. I'm just saying, a, for me, a long time is like 50, 30 seconds. What about a Chrysler? Well, wow. 10 seconds. How many Orlandos are running around out there? Uh, so many that I don't even want to think about it. But in at least one respect, Orlando stands alone. He has got to be a record. Five police chases. Five in one day. One of them right along here. Top speed, 160 miles an hour. Then we went under the Palmetto and we just kept on dipping. We went back to Hialeah and Hialeah got him back. We got scarred because they tried to do a roadblock and we hit the cops. Right straight through, through, hit the bumpers. And they tried to my friend for attempted murder, and a police officer, two, two tried to attempted murder, because they caught him. His criminal education began when he was nine. His teachers, other kids. What he learns, he passes on. A vicious cycle that's apparently out of control. The juvenile justice system, would you consider it a joke? Yeah. The judge looked at me and said, felt sorry for me. Because he is a juvenile, his records are sealed. However, despite all the crimes he says he committed, He's only been arrested 13 times. The most he's ever served, says Orlando, 21 days. He's an ex-con, he's on parole, and he's, he's never given me nothing. It is an angry Betty Pitts who watches the reports aired on News 4 back in February. Reports about angry residents at her Haven homeless shelter in Pariah accusing her of disappearing with their money. Betty Pitts says, what money? She was away trying to get funds to pay their rent. How did you feel about these people living down there with no food, no water, no... I was worried about them. I didn't know they was lying about, on me. I'm, I'm running around still trying... I was still running around trying to get some money. A desperate, she says, she wound up getting sick and had to be admitted into a home. In one of our reports, hours. this man claimed Betty Bob took off with $785 of his money. From News 4 to the shelter, Betty Pitts arrives to confront her accusers. Where did you give me $785? Where? $750. Where? Where you give it to me at? When? Charles Lindsay later admits it was all a misunderstanding. He was the first to feel her wrath. He would not be the last. This one here, this one here that got on the TV and lied and said he worked for me and can prove that I went around collecting money and donations when he know he lied and have given me money. He was never giving me nothing but $5 when you went and cash your staff. A residents, she says, were supposed to chip in and help pay for their own room and board. Most, she says, rarely paid anything. This man here give me $25 three times. To make matters even worse, the shelter was illegal to begin with. It was never licensed. 
As for the shelter, it is now closed. As for Betty Pitts, she says she's out of the sheltering business. Live from the newsroom, Dave Stanley, News 4, South Florida. Oh, yeah, take everything. You pay your money and you're on the water. No experience necessary, none whatsoever. Case in point. How do you put this, how do you put this on? The fact that I've never even been a passenger on one of these, let alone driven one, well, it just wasn't important. I was told to go slower than no wake zone, watch out for the rocks, and have fun. I was off. I could jump some waves, but how close could I safely get to another boat without hurting myself or someone else? Remember, not new at this, real new. Now, to be fair, the rental agreement does have all of the rules of the road on it. I didn't have to read it. As a matter of fact, I didn't read it. But of course, that doesn't help you if you're out there on the waterway along with me. I mean, look at this thing. The writing's so small, and there's so much to read. Besides, if it were so important, wouldn't the guy have told me about it? There's 17 or 15 rules. Uh, we're going to be a half hour talking, and you know. Did it, did it also concern you at all that I've never been on one of these before? I've never had any experience with one of these before. I could have killed myself. I could have killed somebody else. No. If, it's like a gun. If you have a gun, in Florida, everybody has a gun. No, nobody is a killer. They're only the one who pulls the trigger. Given that logic and my lack of experience, I could have been considered a lethal weapon. And there I was, loaded to bear. Okay. Angela, we have a memorial for the victims over here and memories of the victims over here. And now I want you to meet a young lady. She is angry, she is confused, but above all, she is brokenhearted. I, I just can't get through my head how another person can kill somebody just, just like that. And... Just like that is how police say Robert Malcolm River killed Cindy's fiance, Aaron Knight, and 19-year-old Bradley Krause last week during a holdup at this audiologic store in Oakland Park Boulevard. He killed them, say investigators, after tying their hands behind their backs and at close range shooting each in the head. I had no remorse. Uh, I think he even had a little smile on his face. Uh, told the people that, you know, he thanked them for their cooperation. The ones that he let live, he thanked them for the cooperation in the robbery. Just told them to have a good day and just very nonchalantly drove off the premises. Cindy Cole, having seen the suspect's picture for the very first time, had this to say to Rimmer. You are rotten. I hope you suffer inside and out for this because you took my fiance and Brad away from everybody. Everybody's so angry at you and I know the type of people like you don't care at all. You have no heart and I hope you rot. I hope you rot. Using a composite sketch, Rimmer was recognized by a witness, a perfect match to a criminal with a violent history. Having served only three years of a nine-year prison sentence, Rimmer was released six years early. Two years later, two people are dead. Cindy Cole was to be married next year. We had a future together that those guys took away, but they're not going to kill me because he's going to live inside of me forever. 24 hours after the deadly deed, Susan Smith's mother took me into her home to meet her daughter. Little did I know the impact that interview would have. <laughs> Sitting on the floor in front of Susan, David Smith at her side, her tears falling on my hand, we began the interview. This day has been pure hell for both of you, I'm sure. It's been total chaos. It's been, it's been awful. Susan, you? Uh, I don't even know what to say in here. Hey, it was a good word. I just feel like, I just feel like my whole world has been taken away. I mean, my... My children are my life, and, uh, and uh, they just got to be okay. During the course of the interview, she said something else, and now we know what she really meant. I just had to get lower to protect some of that letting thing happen to him.